1.5 million people are without power in the Ukrainian port city of Odessa and surrounding region. Officials say Russia struck two energy facilities using Iranian-made drones. This is just the latest attack on the country's power grid, leaving Ukrainians to prepare for more blackouts as winter sets in. I spoke to Canada's ambassador to Ukraine, Larissa Galadza, on Friday about how, how Canada should respond. Ambassador, nice to see you again. Appreciate your time. Thanks very much. It's good to see you as well. I, I've been watching your Twitter feed a little bit, and I know you've been meeting with people and, and uh, you know, seeing what the situation is on the ground right now. What would be your assessment of how people are doing and, and coping right now? I guess my, my first assessment is that the, the war goes on, rages on. Uh, the lineups that I saw yesterday um, at, at centres here that give out you know, mattresses and, and pillows and, and kitchenware, um, there are lineups. Uh, people are still lining up for humanitarian assistance. People are still fleeing uh, the uh, the areas where the the, 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 the fighting is, is hot and, and fierce. And even people, their IDPs coming out of, out of Kherson as well, even after it's been liberated because the situation, the conditions there are so awful. Um, so the war goes on. Um, everyone now is touched by um, the the, the tax on critical infrastructure. People are colder, people mm -hmm. are darker, uh, people can't live an, an, a normal life. Uh, that said, they are as determined as ever. They know that part of this is a head game, a mind game, a resilience, a mm -hmm. mental resilience mm -hmm. that needs to be there, and they're supporting each other. You, you were at a parliamentary committee last month, uh, and you said that Kyiv was preparing for total loss of heat and electricity. How dangerous could that be? How, how concerned are you that that might happen? I think we have to be prepared for the worst, uh, and that's what this uh, everyone in this city is is doing. Um, but uh, and when you're prepared for the worst, then it'll be okay. Um, the uh, is it is it dangerous? I think it'd be incredibly uncomfortable. Um, but we've got uh, certainly we are Canadians uh, that are that are here working with me. Uh, we have what we need. Uh, we are uh, supporting our our local staff to have uh, so they can have what they need. And of course, all Canadians are supporting Ukrainians uh, with things like generators. You know, $10 million uh, the other day is going to buy 800 generators for Ukrainians. Uh, Putin seems to be signaling that this is going to continue, that this is a strategy to attack the, um, the energy grid and, and make the winter difficult for Ukrainians. Do you, as some others have said, uh, think that this is uh, essentially a war crime, that this is um, a, a different way about it, but that's what this is. These are attacks on civilian infrastructure. These are supposed to be uh, uh, these are supposed to be uh, off limits in in war. Right. Um, so this is just a continuation of what he's been doing before. And absolutely, um, this is these are these are exactly the acts that should be tried as war crimes. The, the mayor of Kyiv has said that uh, an apocalypse is possible in, in the capital this winter. And by that, I guess he means cutting off um, heat and energy and electricity. And that while people shouldn't evacuate now, it is possible uh, that that would be needed. C can you even uh, imagine that, given that y you live in that city and it, it is such a teeming city with people? Do you see that as something that, that could, could happen? You know, I see that with all of these attacks, the Ukrainians are really, really quick to respond. Yeah. They are, uh, they're, uh, they're efficient, they're industrious, they're creative, they're innovative, and they get on top of the problem very quickly. Um, and so I have great faith in, in their ability to, to, to respond to just about anything. Um, and, uh, and, and I know that they will. What, what does Ukraine uh, need right now? What are you hearing right now from Ukrainian officials about the needs beyond the generators that you just talked about there? What other things are, are they desperate for? Um, they're they're desperate for the for the things uh, the 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 equipment the the materials that help them to uh, repair the uh, the electrical grid that has been so okay. badly damaged. Yeah. Um, but you know, yesterday I was with uh, four internally displaced people from Mariupol. They were telling us their stories, and they're horrific stories. They're horrible, horrible stories of uh, of, of of occupation and having to escape from Mariupol when it was under the most heavy uh, shelling day and night. And at the end of that session of them telling us, you know, what they went through and, and how they've been helped by our assistance, I said, what, we're thinking about what more you need. Tell us, what do you need? 
to a person, they said, weapons. Weapons, weapons, weapons. We need to win this war. Um, and so that is still the determination of every single person in this country uh, to win the war. And they know that they are winning it and they're winning it with uh, with the support of their Western partners. Do, do you foresee then any uh, situation where a negotiation happens? I know it's up to the Ukrainians to decide. I, I understand that. But at this stage, given the length of the conflict and, and the determination, as you say, of the Ukrainian people to win on the battle, Field. Does that feel like that's out of the realm of possibility at this stage? Well, I think that President Zelensky has said there won't be negotiations with uh, with a, a president of Russia whose name is Putin. Uh, and that was reiterated to me today again when I was at the presidential office. Um, the second thing that I would say is that anything that looks like it's a, a, a stop or a pause or a, 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 a dragging uh, uh, things out a little bit on the side of, of Russia is will only play into Russia's advantage because then they can regroup. Right. Uh, and that's why Ukrainians do not want to stop. The winter will not stop them. The yeah. freezing cold won't stop them. Um, they may not have all of the uh, all of the all of the weapons they need to, to go forward, but they're going forward anyway because they know that they have the initiative, they have the momentum, and any slowdown for any reason uh, transfers that. I, I want to end on immigration. Obviously, Canada has welcomed tens of thousands of Ukrainians more uh, arriving uh, this week. Ten months in, are we still seeing the kinds of numbers uh, that you had at the beginning? Do you see those those applications being translated into people actually coming to this country? Do, do you think we might see more? The, uh, the there's a steady in, in steady um, number of applications uh, every week, and I think with the cold, uh, I, I I know from people around me that you know some people are again sending their families uh, abroad. So we don't know exactly what will dictate the behavior of of Ukrainians, uh, and especially as regards you know travel and 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 and, and settling temporarily in, in Canada. Um, but there is a, a high degree of, a high degree of interest continues absolutely. Okay, Ambassador, stay warm, stay safe, and uh, happy holidays. Thanks very much for your time. And to you as well.